Oh man. Uh, that is wow. making this is that is making this is me, making me <laughs> sick. So uh, what's your name? Foxtrot. What what is it that you do? I'm um I'm going to be working for a GT3 racing team. A GT3 racing team. Well, how do you get into something like that? Well, for me, it just took a matter of um, knowing the right people and being in the right place at the right time with the right know-how. Um, it all kind of started way back when. Uh, back in school, I was a bit of a weird kid. Always have been, always always was. Um, but I was flirting with all the girls because I was finally figuring out that I'm actually kind of a cool guy. And this one girl, her name was... Um, she and I kind of hit it off. We were, um, we'd talk. It was cool. I was flirting with her, but she wasn't flirting back, so we just ended up staying friends, and it was whatever. Um, I reached out to her recently because I'm going to be moving to in about 150-odd days. So I reached out to her knowing that she lives there and was like, hey, what's up? I'm moving for NASCAR Technical Institute. We should get together. Let's hang out. And she was like, dude, are you looking for a job? Yeah. What can you get me? I work for DXDT Racing. Do you know how to work on cars? For the most part, yeah. I mean, I can figure it out if I don't know. Sweet. Let's get you in. Let's get you hooked up. Let's let's make it work, dude. So that's how somebody gets into a GT3 race team. Wow, that's that's pretty cool. I mean, how, how did you get into, you know, what made you want to get into that profession? Um, it was two years ago now. This is a bit of a long story, so I'm sorry if I'm going to ramble for a little bit, but you'll understand my motives no, no, you're good. from that point forward. Um, being this weird kid... I was going to pursue classical music. I was going to pursue a career in playing classical music. I am a percussionist. i um, been a drummer for as long as I could hold sticks. My dad taught me most everything I know. Um, between what he's taught me, what I picked up from school and classical music, I actually was playing in the um, Utah State Youth Orchestra which was the feeder series to the Utah State Symphony. So I was going to go pro. I was on the right path and everything. I met this girl who was the bassist for that orchestra, and I thought she was kind of cute. So I pursued it. Whatever. Might as well. She comes up and asks me for my number. I later learned that this was just because I was a drummer and she was in a couple of bands and didn't know if she ever wanted to need a drummer, you know. Um, but I started doing the whole thing, you know, hey, I think you're pretty cute. You look cool. How'd you get into this? What's up with this? Uh-huh. Okay. Uh-huh. Okay. All right. Okay. When are we going to dinner? So we went to dinner and we started hitting it off. We broke up after eight months and it left me in a really, really bad place. The whole time it was just getting bad to worse. I was considering suicide. It was that bad. It was one of those just, it doesn't stop hurting type situations. And uh, I realized, because I've been there before, I realized that this wasn't going to work. I'm better than this. I'm stronger. I can't afford to be committing suicide. I got shit to do. So I quit the orchestra because I didn't want to deal with her anymore. I started just asking myself, what is it that I want? What is what is me? What can I do as myself to make myself feel good and pursue what feels good? And I was in the auto class at school, and I was having a great time. The kids were cool. The class was fun. The teacher was friendly. It was cool. It felt good. And driving fast felt good. I got gifted a Honda Civic, a 2002 Honda Civic, when I learned how to drive. Um, had 85,000 miles on it. Since then, I put about 50,000. I've modded it. I've, you know, I murdered it. Just make it all black. Nice, shiny, 
whatever. And I started night racing. I just started going up against these randos and started night racing. And it felt really good. And it was fun and we weren't getting caught. So I decided, screw it, this is great. I'm loving this. This is what I want to be doing. This is so much fun. So I started looking into how to do it legitimately because I got my first speeding ticket and it ended up costing like $2,000. You need a car. You need a drive. You gotta have... $2,000? Yeah. How well, fast were you going? 130 in a 80 zone. Oh. But because we were night racing, the cop just hit us for everything he could. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> At that point, at that point, my win to loss ratio was about 50-50, which is still really good for a rookie. I was winning about as much as I was losing, but it wasn't consistent, and I, I like being consistent, because then I know where I can improve. Um, so I decided, screw it, I want to invest in a car that makes me feel really good to get into. Started looking around on KSL, Craigslist... And eventually on KSL, I found a 1989 Pontiac Firebird Trans Am GTA SE. I didn't, the guy who owned it clearly didn't know what he had. He was offering wow. it for four, four and a half thousand. So I went, checked it out. It is in horrible condition. 174 original miles. All the numbers match, which is a plus, but it has clearly been redlined every single time it had been driven. So it's all oil, it's got oil leaks, transmission leaks, um, the whole car's falling apart. But I bought it anyway, I gave him one and a half for it, and he took it, so I was psyched. Raced it, and then my win-to-loss ratio went up from about 50-50 to about 90-10. Most of these kids I was racing against, I was beating. So all the kids at my school saw that I all of a sudden had this really nice car. Well, it wasn't nice. The paint's still all messed up, but it it's fast. And I'm fast, and we were fast. So they invited me to join their night racing crew. So I did. Won my first couple of races. And it was great, but the problem was parts started to break at around the fifth race. Stuff started breaking. Um... I suddenly had a bunch of cooling issues, and I was overheating all the time. Just cruising down a 40-mile-an-hour road, I would overheat. Okay, I don't know what I'm doing with cars. I'm a freaking musician. I don't know anything about cars. I know how to change a tire, and that's it. I know how to put gas in it. Better start learning. I'm 16. I... I had just gotten my license. I'd been procrastinating the whole time, but I finally got my license. And I started learning what, what it took to fix cars. So I pulled the water pump, um, replaced the old gasket with the new one, put the new water pump in, retightened everything, retensioned all the belts, and it worked. And it was better than before. And that felt great, because then I was racing and I was noticing I wasn't even, I wasn't fluctuating in the temperature at all. Nothing was moving. It was, it worked. And it was such a good feeling. So I started winning, I was winning, 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 winning. Our school had a rival school. Um, so they put me up. The rival school challenged us because our football team had just beaten theirs, so they wanted to reclaim their school's glory. So their auto shop challenged our auto shop to a series of races. We were going to go, because I live in the mountains, we were going to go down the canyon, and whoever made it down first or with less damage won. I didn't want to do this race. I loved this car. This car saved me. This car turned me from this kind of wimpy little music guy this band nerd into this i cut my hair in a pompadour i started wearing leather jackets i started chewing on toothpicks because i'm too cool to smoke um and i i got cool i got cool and i can't thank the car enough i wish pontiac were still around because of what that car did for me it saved my life um but i didn't want to do this race I didn't want to break this car. If I screwed up, I'm going off a cliff. 
it's a 1989 car. There's no, there's no, um, airbags. I wasn't making enough money to put a roll cage in it and a harness and a proper race seat. I didn't have any of that. The car was falling apart as I drove it. Um, I was pulling out, you know, insulation from the side. I was pulling out the transmission knob. I was putting on, I was putting new bulbs in it all the time. I had to manually, actually, I still manually have to do it, but I had to manually, um, twist the pop-up headlights so that the pop-up headlights would stay popped because the motors went out and i'm 16 i'm pushing wheelchairs at the airport making nine bucks an hour working probably 20 hours a week as much as i could i'm not making enough money to build a race car even now with the virus and the world ending and everything i went out and got a full-time job I'm supposed to be a senior in high school, but I went out and got a full-time job. I just decided I'm going to do packets and um, just test out of high school because, screw it, I know what I'm doing. I'm done. I'm tired of this. I was supposed to early test out last year, and it just, the world ended. So here we are. Um, and it's frustrating, but it's what it is. Whatever. The from the from I won that night race. The kid wrecked his Mustang. It was bad. Thankfully, he was okay. Nobody got hurt. But the guy I was racing, totally, it was a beautiful little white 2000-something Mustang. It was a fourth-gen Mustang. So clean. It was so pretty. He He had clearly thrown so much love, so much work, so much energy into this car just to have it get totaled. And it was such a bad feeling. But we also had 600 bucks on me winning like per person so if we if i won we made a ton of money if he won we lost a ton of money but they knew i was going to win which is why i was the guy who was racing so i feel bad about it still but it got it paid for the car so you said we team we was the school my classmates the auto shop oh yeah you and your auto shop team yeah our auto shop teacher was so cool uh let's call him mr bryce he was this he's okay i'm six feet tall in real life uh he came up to about maybe here which would put him maybe five foot two five foot three dude was short and he was big he was very um bar body kind of top heavy sort of dude if i had to draw a caricature of him i would draw him as like an oval on two stickly grew grew from um uh despicable me grew he looks like grew yeah Um, just short stocky little mechanic guy uh, he's been, he's, um, Honda certified. He's been a Honda certified mechanic for X amount of years. He's funny. He's friendly. He's not a typical teacher. A typical teacher is just, you know, the run of the mill. You will do what I say when I tell you, because I tell you to type thing. Smack your knuckles with a ruler. This guy was cool. He was one of us. It was just so fun being in that class. But one year or one semester we were doing tires when we finished tires our end of quarter um there we go our end of quarter term was going to be a a test okay all you guys pick somebody else here here, let me do my impression of him okay everyone we're gonna have you pick a partner and you and your partner are going to work together, and you're going to do a tire change NASCAR style. All we're going to give you, we're going to give you a pump jack, we're going to give you a wheel chalk, and we're going to give you a couple of guns. So you guys are on to go change all four tires and put new tires on and see how well you can do it. Find a partner by next class, and then we'll go. So I team up with one of my racing team buddies, and I'm like, dude, let's do this. We got this. It's no problem. And he's like, okay. So we start practicing. We start pulling my tires and putting my summers on for my winters. 
we start putting the Trans Am tires on the Acura. We start pulling the Acura tires and putting them on the Trans Am. And then um, eventually we realize, wait a minute, we're really, really, really fast at this. So the next class rolls around. Everyone's putting out pretty solid times. You know, we got a 36 second over here. We got a 18 second over here. Damn, that was quick. Finally, it's his and my turn. And we pump out a 14 second tire change. Because <laughs> you had those bolt unreal. guns, right? The ones that uh, yeah, pull those out real the, quick. We had the... Um... And I know it sounds really hard to believe if you know what you're talking about. And I know 14 seconds for two high school kids who barely have any practice is really hard to believe. But we have it on video. So... I would say, yes, I know that sounds like just some dude in VR chat complaining and talking about, oh, look at how cool I am. I'm the best guy in the history of the world, whatever, blah, 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 blah. No, we have video, so I can back this up. Two scouts from NASCAR Technical Institute in Mooresville, North Carolina, happened to be watching us as we did that. We won the challenge. So they come up to us after class and go, Hey, kids, do you boys want to go racing? And I looked at my, him, and he looked at me, and I said, Hell yeah! And he went, Pass. So I'm going to North Carolina in about 150 days for NASCAR Technical Institute, where upon completion, I have the opportunity to sign on with a NASCAR team as a pit crew member. If I'm good enough at NASCAR, they'll put me on the engine development course where I'll build a NASCAR engine that will then run in a NASCAR race. Like the most recent one <laughs> was the um, NASCAR went to Bristol recently, and it's the first time they went on dirt in over 50 years. So big deal. I can't remember who won off the top of my head, but I do know that the guy who won... Uh, that engine was a NASCAR Tech engine. So the kids at that school built the engine that won that race. So it's a big deal in a way. Um, it's just such a massive opportunity. And I'm that's how that's the story. That's how I got from band nerd to suddenly NASCAR grade mechanic. Oh, and I learned everything I needed to know off of YouTube. I signed on with an LMP3 team literally today. That was earlier today I got the text that I'm in. So I'm just in this constant, continual state of just extremely hype, always. I'm in such a good mood, always. Sure, my job is a little boring and it gets monotonous towards the end of the day, and my feet hurt always, but who cares? I'm a NASCAR engineer, and I don't live in the South, and I haven't been racing since I was five years old, and I haven't been working on cars with my dad since we were, since I could walk. I've been painting houses, and it sucks, and I hate it, but it doesn't matter, because now I get to work on a Mercedes AMG for a job, and they'll pay me for it. It's... <laughs> they say you'll never work a day if you do something that you love. But I think if you work, and it's for something that you love, your work gets valued that much higher. And you end up in this perpetual state of just, I'm a badass, I'm so cool, I'm working out, I'm glowing up, I'm a million times better, I'm infinitely better than I was two years ago today. All it takes to be happy... All it takes to be cool, all it takes to be that fun guy, to go from this sweatpants loser into a jeans rockabilly badass, figure out the sub-steps. What do you want? How do you get there? And then just break it down, break it down, break it down, break it down, break it down. I wanted to be a NASCAR guy. I wanted to be cool. I wanted to be friendly. I wanted to be liked. Okay, um, start learning about jokes, start watching comedians, figure out how to be friendly, figure out how to be cool, talk to people, um, go outside, uh, just do something new, don't be afraid of new things. What's the worst that she's going to say if you ask her out? Ew. It's not my fault that her taste is bad. 
You know, it just it, you are a badass. That's what it is. You are cool. You're great. You're awesome. Unless you're not, but you know that you can be. So if you want to be, A B C D E F G ad infinitum until you're there, and you're you're gonna get there. All you gotta do is just know what you want and how to get there. You can do anything. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching. Wait, hold on a second. It's sound, and I, I think I might be going completely insane. Spit it out. But it sounded like you said something about Knights Templar. Yeah. He said that he got excommunicated. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. Also, sharing with your friends would be a big help. I don't know what else you want from me, so...